Hey guys, welcome back to the shop. My name's Adam, SNS 43. It's kind of a sad time around my shop right now. Yesterday, I was, uh, I was a victim of being burglarized. My shop was broken into and the scumbags did take off with some of my stuff. Fortunately, some of the things that they took were not my precision tools, my machinist tools, things like that. They, uh, they took off with my Craftsman tool sets, my DeWalt drill motor that I use all the time down on the mill, and my Hitachi uh, four and a half inch angle grinder. And so far that's all I found that they took. Uh, outside I had some fishing poles that were my dad's that I had outside. They, they really didn't have much value to them, but I had them out there because I really didn't have nowhere to store them, and, but they grabbed those also. And this is the second time. The, the first time was last week. They, uh, they took my, I had a floor jack that was outside against the wall three-ton floor jack and they took that so they've been scoping me out and checking out the shop they've got a good hiding spot behind the shop there looking in that window to see all the stuff I have and I think they've been planning it so they came back and they knew that we were gone and they pried my side door open and pushed it open I, I have my oxy fuel tanks that I always sit right in front of that door just to kind of help secure it also but they just shoved it back and pushed it out of the way and come on in and what they did was that window back there behind my granddad's toolbox they they set my granddad's top box down in the floor and opened the window up busted the screen out threw the screen way out there in the woods and they must have used that to set all the goods outside the door, outside the window, I mean. And then they, they uh, took off with everything. So, pretty upset. I'm pretty shooken up about this. Uh, I've been very lucky that I haven't had to deal with this before until now. And it sucks. It really does. It sucks big time. It's a feeling of being violated. Somebody comes in and they have no intentions other than to take your things and they don't care anything about you. And it's just, uh, it's a bad feeling. And very, very um, unnerving. Just uh, anybody that's been a victim of it knows what I'm talking about. You know, they just they have no regard for a working man and his items and his what he you know works hard to get he just they just want to take it so that they can pawn it sell it trade it for you know what so and I know that's what's going on here later today I'm actually going to be checking out some of the pawn shops this is kind of a pawn shop area we have several around here I'm going to be checking them out after it happened, I did call the cops and they came out and did a report. They took photos, you know, the crime scene guys came out and they took photos and dusted for fingerprints. I don't know if you can see it, but the Lista is covered in the, the dust for the um, fingerprinting. They did open that up, but they didn't take anything out of it. They actually set one of my steric boxes out and so I don't know maybe they just uh, who knows luckily I didn't get anything taken out of that but um, so anyway we got a report they took fingerprints they took my fingerprints so that they could uh, remove my fingerprints from whatever they took they did get a little bit on the window back there they even got a couple palm prints so I'm hoping that they have a little luck with that and maybe can find out who it is if he's got a if he's got a uh, record I have an idea who it is I don't know the man personally but 
my neighbor across the street that lives across the highway there, he's the one that came over and talked to me the day that my floor jack went missing because he's seen a man on a bicycle go to that abandoned house back there and uh, he said he's seen him walk down in the woods. We got some woods behind my house here. And that was the last that he seen him until later he noticed that he was riding his bike down the sidewalk and he was pulling a floor jack behind him. And he didn't know where he got it from, but he knew he got it from somebody because he shouldn't be pulling a floor jack behind him. So he came over and told me about it and asked me was I missing one. And of course I was. I told him, yep, it was sitting right there. So they got it. So they, uh, they're they hopping the fence and uh, coming in the back way. So that's what they did this time also. So I've got a friend named Don. Me, me and him have been good buddies for a while. He's been in the security business for a very long time. He came and hooked up a security system in my old shop, and which me and Gil had, had taken down a few months ago with plans to hook it up here. And it was my fault for never contacting Don and asking him to come over and hook it back up. But whenever all this went down yesterday, I, I sent Don a text and said, hey man, they got me, they came in the shop. And he texted me back and said, I'm on my way. He was at his shop working and he dropped what he was doing, jumped in his, in his, his uh, van and came over here immediately. He was here in half hour. That's a, that's a true friend right there. Like he says, a true friend doesn't even call. They just show up. And that's what he did. He showed up. So we worked on installing my alarm system here in the shop last night. We were out here for a good six hours hooking it up. So... I do have an alarm system hooked up now, which is amazing. You know, uh, not even 24 hours after it happens, I got an alarm system. And this alarm system will hopefully deter somebody if they try to come back in here. But we do have plans to go ahead and invest in a nicer security system with cameras, both inside and outside. That was one of the things that the cop recommended also, is that have one inside also so that you have a better chance of catching somebody with your stuff. So we're gonna put some cameras around here. We'll have a nice DVR system, you know. It's one of the things that we're gonna to have to invest in just to protect our investment here. And it's a shame that it has to come to that, but the world is full of scumbags and they don't care about you. They just want your stuff so that they can collect a few bucks. So, I gotta thank my buddy Don. That meant a lot to me that he come over like that and hooked this security system up, or alarm system, I mean. So, I, uh, I've i gotta replace my door. It's something that I've gotta invest in is replacing the door and the frame. I built, uh, I fabricated a bar last night and I've got it bolted to the block there right right inside the uh, where the door is I've got it bolted in but I've got it just enough where they can if they try to come back again you know they can pry the door open again it's only going to open just enough to break the contact on the alarm there and it's going to siren off so we got that so uh, I don't think they're, they're going to try to get that door open I mean I don't I don't know what kind of effort you could probably use a battering ram and knock it open but it'll keep somebody from coming in i've also got motion detectors in here now and i've got one of them set off in the back here if it detects somebody it goes off immediately uh, i have a delay on the front side here where i can come in and shut it down but the door and that back sensor is set to go off immediately if it detects so I feel a little better about that. I feel much more at ease that I've got that hooked up now. But I do have more plans in the works. You know, I've got plenty of windows and all of the windows here, you know, I'm vulnerable. So 
I'm probably going to go ahead and invest in some materials here pretty soon and build me some frames and get me some expanded metal and basically just build some guards that I can bolt onto the wall and cover up the windows to keep people from trying to bust out my windows and come in here. And then again, we'll have to do something with the door. We're gonna, we're gonna have to put a lot better door and lock system there. So that is what I've been going through. I took a couple days off of work to, uh, I just, I couldn't go back to work knowing that somebody's got their eye on me and uh, my boss had no problem with he even come by this morning to check on me thank you paul he uh he came by and checked on me and see how i was doing and said take some time off do what you got to do and he understands so i'm going to take some time off and um might do a little bit more around here not haven't decided yet but i do have some footage from this week some stuff that we have done in the shop and we've got some viewer mail too so we're going to, I don't know if this is going to be a one or two parter at the time of tell, uh, talking to you here, but we might have another two parter because I got a bunch of stuff to show you and uh, a little project that I did here in the shop. Got some stuff that I wanted to show you that I did at work, some more uh, machine work there, building some big hydraulic rods. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what, some, what kind of SNS I can make for you. So, uh, Anyway, we'll go ahead and get some other footage. And for the guys that uh, have been following me on social media, I, you know, I posted about it there, and I appreciate all your support and um, all of your comments there. So thanks again, everybody, for your continued support. So we'll go ahead and get to some other footage, okay? guys here's our first viewer mail got a couple wrenches here this was sent to us by Chuck Bomarito also known as outside outside screwball on YouTube and Chuck was doing some cleaning out and he found these wrenches and thought that I might like them one is a fair mount 5 8 to 9 16 and this other one is a Billings 11 16 and 9 16 the billings is this is just like the one that I found at the, the flea market recently and showed you and these are nice little wrenches uh, the, so this is the second one now that I've got and and I, I like this old classic style that billings made right here so two more little wrenches to add to our collection here and thank you very much Chuck for sending them to me I, I love them and I appreciate it man hey guys so today I made a run to the flea market. Uh, today's actually Saturday, and I haven't been to a flea market on Saturday in a very long time. I usually go on Sunday mornings, but I decided I wanted to try Saturday and, ha and just see if I happened to uh, get any better luck on finding some goodies or if there was more people out there, that kind of thing. And it was actually a pretty good day. I did notice that there was a few more vendors than normal, but I think that's because because the temps are cooling down, there's more and more people out there. But today was kind of an odd cold day. We we just had a, we, there was that cold front that moved through the whole eastern United States and it made its way all the way down here to us. And it was 41 degrees this morning when I woke up. So it was a little chilly out there at the flea market. Matter of fact, I couldn't find my beanies, so one of the first tables I went to, this lady had a stack of beanies there for sale. They're all brand new, two bucks a piece. So I grabbed two of these and I wore that when I was down there because it was, uh, right now it's still in the 40s. It's only about 10 o'clock. So anyway, I did happen to find some good stuff today and I got it all here to show you. I did find one really exciting item that uh, right at the last minute I was getting ready to leave. So we'll wait for a minute to show you that. So anyway, the first the first lot of goodies, I went by this table and this was the kind of stuff I'm looking for. The guy had a bunch of tools. So he had all of these 
C clamps here. And I checked them all out and they're all Williams. All of these right here, there's five of them. Yep, all, all of these are Williams, uh, J.H. Williams. They all work good and they just need a good cleaning. All the screws work. So these, because they're so rusted up, that one's a little bit better right there. It's actually got some of the paint still on it, but uh, we'll probably be bead blasting all of these C-clamps here. But you can't ever have too many C-clamps, and I see C-clamps quite often down there, and I look at all of them every time I see them. Usually the ones I've been finding lately are not that good quality, usually just uh, imported stuff. So I look at them really good, and I found that all these were Williams, so... I want to go ahead and get these and add them because it's, you just can't have too many clamps. So, uh, so I grabbed all these and put them in a stack. And then I noticed on the back side of this table he had two of these. And for those that use this style, probably recognize that it looks like a cant twist type of clamp. Now I did a, I went ahead and did a little bit of wire brushing on the, the tops here on both of the clamps and I cannot find a name on these so far. I can't find a name. I was assuming that these were uh, cant twist. Uh, I've never had a cant twist clamp. This, these are actually my first two. But as I said, I'm not sure if they're cant twist or if they're a copy or what they are because I can't find a name on them. Uh, it could be that they're just very old. They do have a lot of rust on them, but they're still in good shape. The screws work good. They just need a cleaning. And then the other the other thing is that the uh, the blocks here, I thought that the can't twist. They're all copper, and these look like they're steel. Okay, yeah, these are these blocks on these are steel. But they do have the V-notches in them for uh, squaring up to round, round materials. So anyway, I've always, I've been, I've actually been wanting to add some cant twist to my inventory here of tools, and just never bit the bullet and and bought some yet. So I've been keeping my eyes out for these and the Bessie brand also, the the J clamps. So anyway. Uh, he had prices on all these. These are four a piece, uh, three a piece, two a piece, four dollars. So uh, I asked him how much he wanted for all these, and he said that he would take seventeen dollars. So I decided to go ahead and buy them all. Okay, so got a bunch of C clamps here, and I was happy with that. All good quality stuff, and I think what I'm going to do with these is I'll probably just bead blast all of them and clean them really good after I blast them and just oil them up real good and just use them like that. So I am excited to finally have some of these. You know I see I see Tom use them all the time and they look extremely handy because of the position of the screw. These actually still swivel real good. So finally got some can't twist clamps in my shop. <laughs> so that was the first score. And uh, let me go ahead and gather up the second. I'll be right back. All right, so my second score, I was very excited whenever I found this item. I was walking through the flea market with that green tote with all the clamps that I had recently bought. And I was actually working my way back to my truck on the other side. And I was making just one little quick pass down to that last row there. And I'm kind of looking back and forth. And I come up on this table of an elderly couple on my right side and they just had a few things on the table and then right in the middle of the table I see this <laughs> so you know I had to go check it out but he actually he had it open just like that so what we got here is a beautiful six inch caliper, steric caliper. 
and these are some of the older ones that are made in USA and they are like brand new they they really don't look or feel like they've got wear on them or that they've been used a lot really so you know these were sitting there like this open on his table and almost missed them and that's why you got to pay attention to stuff and I, I happen to look over and I see him I'm like ooh man look at those so I walk over there and I set the little tote down and I and I reach in and, and start looking at them you know and I was like man that is a nice that is a nice six inch caliper right there and so I asked the man what he wanted for his calipers and he said thirty five dollars I was like, I think that's an excellent buy, and I think I got to have them for that price. Now, uh, it wouldn't be the flea market if you didn't try to negotiate a little bit. I did offer him thirty, and he says, "No, sir, I'll sell them to you for thirty-five dollars." And you know, you're getting a good buy at thirty-five dollars for those. So, <laughs> I said, "No, nope, no arguing with that." So, I did ask him though. I said, "Were these yours, or you know, is this something that you picked up and you're reselling?" And he says that he bought these uh, used 18 years ago. And he said he used them maybe two times to measure something. And he's, he just hasn't touched them besides that. So they're in excellent condition. And they, they did belong to somebody. There's, a, there's a, a scribing on the back here. It says NP and then a number, 802-161. So this... This could have belonged to somebody or, you know, a, another shop or, or who knows. This might have been part of their tool inventory that they had sold. So, tell you what. Um, let me grab the camera. We'll move it in here closer. I'll give you guys a little better peek at these calipers, okay? Okay, here's your little closer-up shot so you can see them better. So, got the certificate with them. I love that they say American made there on the uh, the dial face and the the hallmark there is this is the ones that they're actually it's like engraved in there that they're inset and as well as all of the numbers right here They have a good feel. They go right back to zero every time. They're clocked at 12 o'clock like they should be. Great tool, good buy. I was very excited to get these. This is the kind of stuff that, this is why we go to the flea market and this is the kind of thing that you know, you're looking for. And I just, I felt very lucky that I found these and I was happy to, uh, to pay $35 for them and just a good tool to, to add to the machine shop collection around here. So here's some stuff from work that I'm going to share with you. Some work that I've done at my other job. Right there you see that is a rod gland and a packing nut. I had to do some buttress thread chasing on those and I had to bore and bush them, bring them back to spec. There's, a, there's actually two of these cylinders that we repaired and I was able to save those and uh, get them back in usable shape so here's the rod I've got two of these I'm building and that is some five inch induction hardened chrome plated rod and just taking some rough and cuts right there we're we're removing a quarter inch run about 15 thousand speed rate I think and use another one of those sand Vic inserts that might give me those things I like and make that work really good do a good job on that 1045 chrome plated rod. This is a pretty good, pretty good sized job. I've worked on these all week, and I was able to get them both knocked out. We had we had a bunch of other work we had to do also that uh, I'll show you. But um, most of this is just about the rod work that I'm doing, getting them turned. We had to do some board and thread it on the other end. So to this end here, we had to turn it down for the piston and then thread it for the nut. And that is some buttress thread. 
that's three and a half by 12 buttress thread tried to get in here a little closer that you could see it and they turned out pretty good so here's another cut I was making on the second rod and I just I grabbed this and and filmed it because I tried to pull out my cool mist and try to help that tool a little bit and you can see I was making my very first cut through that induction harden after I you have to preheat it and kind of soften a little bit but it's pretty tough once you get underneath it it's good to go and I think I got some more shots of the buttress threading in here to show you also that was just another clip of that uh, turning that induction hardened area off you can see it glowing so uh, I think I already showed you this, <laughs> but we'll go to it anyway. Uh, I missed a few, but got a tapered in there for your cushion, some buttress threading, and I had to grind me a tool bit to cut those and get up close to a shoulder. That's a piece of 3 8 high speed steel that I ground. A little bit closer shot of the, uh, of the buttress threads there. And then here's the rod flipped end for end, doing the opposite end for the, the rod I have to screw into. You just have to drill it out and then start boring it. So I got it bored the size there. I got a little counter bore and just used an internal threading bar. And that was uh, 3 inch 12. So it's a 12 pitch, which is very common in cylinder work. I couldn't get any video. It's hard to thread and hold a camera at the same time. But it, it worked out real good. I had a ended up having a really good fit on both of the rods. And that's what it looks like with the rod I screwed into it. And this last clip I'm sharing, this is one of the cylinders that were that we built and we're testing it. And the guys had already tested it successful and I, I seen them doing it and I wanted to walk over there and get a little clip of it, you know, extending and retracting. But it give you an idea of what the cylinder looks like and how it performs and that I'm kind of zooming in right there you can see the the packing nut and then the glands behind it we had to remove that blind in there and that's the uh, the new weld weld it back on but that's about it guys <laughs>